Yesterday my doctor said, you are way too young to be this deaf. Basically, my entire life I've struggled with hearing issues. When I was a kid, I'd get a lot of ear infections and I think that I had glue ear a lot. I don't really know, but I just know that I had grommet surgery a lot. What they do is they put this little bead or tube, I think, in your eardrum and it helps to drain out the fluid and it just kind of clears everything up, I think. I am not really sure. I think that's how it works. Apparently it's a really common issue that children have and you're supposed to grow out of it, but I just didn't. And so I've had grommets quite a few times throughout my life to try and help with my hearing. Because it, what it does, not only is there like an infection, you can't hear anything because of all of that. You have ones that last for varying amounts of time. And so when I was in year 10, I got one that's supposed to last for five years, but it fell out after three and a half years and straight away I just couldn't hear again. It's like, are you serious? What's the point of that? My surgeon said that I could just get grommets again, but I'd had them so many times now and the risk of permanent perforation of my eardrum was just too high and it wasn't worth the risk because when it's in there, it's creating a hole in your eardrum. You're not allowed to get it wet or have any water go near it. And if you have it too many times, then once the grommet comes out, the hole in your eardrum can become permanent. No, thank you. <laughs> I do not want that. So anyway, after that one fell out, I just ignored my ear and just kind of dealt with it. It became a part of my everyday life, just not being able to hear out of one ear. Um, and being a musician is really hard if you can't hear very well. But anyway, so recently I went to the doctor for headaches, completely unrelated to my ear. I was just getting headaches every day, and so he sent me for an MRI. My brain is completely fine, which is great, but they did find an ear infection, obviously, <laughs> which I can't, like, it's not that surprising because I couldn't hear anything, so obviously there was gonna be something there. I didn't really care, but my doctor was like, we need to deal with this right now so you don't get meningitis and die because it's so close to your brain now. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, sure, let's, let's do that. So I got treated for the infection. Oh, there's also, here are some screenshots. I took some screenshots of the scan so you can see. You don't even have to know how to read a scan to see that there's something going on with my ear. They said actually, based on these scans, that they couldn't rule out what's called cholesteatoma, which is, it's, essentially a skin cyst that erodes your bones and that kind of stuff. It acts as if it's a tumour, but it isn't a tumour, it's just a cyst. I think, I don't know, it's not something that you want anyway and they couldn't rule it out. So they sent me for a hearing test and a CT scan. So I'm on my way now to get a comprehensive hearing test because yesterday my doctor said, you are way too young to be this deaf. So <laughs> we're gonna go get a hearing test done and I guess see uh, see what's up. All right, let me show you these results. Red, this is my right ear, this is my left ear. This is perfect, this is great, this is fantastic, this is normal. And then my left ear is, well, look, it's not, so we're just, we're gonna get that sorted out. So basically, that hearing test chart says that I have moderate mixed conductive hearing loss. So you have uh, normal, mild, moderate, severe, and profound. With my left ear, it's, it's moderate mixed. So there's a little bit of mild, a little bit of severe, but it's mostly just moderate. After being told that I need a CT scan as well, I got really invested in trying to figure out what is going on with my ear because I just kn knew that I couldn't hear but now the doctors are like no there's actually something going on and we're going to get to the bottom of it because you should be able to hear you're too young so I became really invested in trying to figure out what's going on and I get the images back from all of my scans before the report comes through or before my doctor has explained anything to me so as soon as I got those CT report, uh, the CT images back, I tried to become a radiologist overnight so I could understand what I was reading instead of just waiting for the doctor to tell me, which I should have just done because I had the world's most short-lived career in radiology. When I got my report back, I did not understand a single word. I don't know what this...
There are words that I've never seen before. I thought that there were three things that I thought it could be based on what I'd seen in my research <laughs> and not any of those words at all were in my report. So I'm like, great. I actually have no idea. In about half an hour, I'm going to get the results of, I mean, I have the results, but my doctor's going to call me and explain the results of my CT scan to me. So, so my doctor called me and he said, <laughs> He said there are no tumours, so that's good. And he said, I have a lot of middle ear damage. And didn't elaborate at all. I already know <laughs> that I have a lot of middle ear damage. I guess that's why he's not an ENT and why he referred me to an ENT. So it's fine. I just really thought that he would have more to say. It's fine. I just have to wait until Friday now to find out what's going on and where we go from here when I see the ENT but um I really wanted to know what was up today but I had a call with my doctor and he didn't really explain anything to me so I just had to wait until I saw the ENT firstly the ENT is so nice I really really like him he's great he didn't really explain what was actually written in my report like because I don't know what the medical jargon is I, I don't think he's told me something different to what my report says kind of I think because I don't know what my report says really and he didn't really explain that to me <laughs> basically he thinks that so I've got heaps of fluid in my middle ear obviously we already know that okay, I need to sneeze he thinks that one of my bones in my ear is fractured so I have a broken bone in my ear which is crazy caused from the infection that's been there for well, the fluid that's been there for a really really long time we went through my images and he was kind of showing me that was that was pretty cool showing me sort of what everything was and like what i was actually looking at rather than just what i thought i was looking at in my own research he said we had a few options he said the easiest thing would just be grommets again but i've had them so many times they didn't work and he was and even he said he's like it's only temporary anyway so like what's the point he said another option was hearing aids that I could just have a hearing aid and that would make a difference and, and be fine but also it's not really addressing the actual problem yeah and I'd rather just get a proper surgery as well just get it done dealt with so this other surgery it's not like guaranteed that it'll work because <laughs> if the fluid comes the fluid might come back again I don't think that it will but like also I don't really know. There were three options that we had in terms of restoring my hearing. The grommets, no thank you. Hearing aid, no thank you. So I'm going to get a mastoidectomy. What a mastoidectomy is, is they shave this part of your head, cut into it, and take out the bad stuff. <laughs> I think. I don't really know. And while he's in there, he's going to check if I have any broken bones and I think reconstruct them. So that is where we're at. I get the surgery in three weeks and then after that I should be able to hear. <laughs> this is my new look. <laughs> It's high fashion, honestly. Yeah, I had surgery this morning and I'm just in the ward now. The doctor said that it's all, it all went well and was really straightforward and it turns out I don't actually have any fractured bones, which is really, really good. Yeah, he said he wasn't sure. The only way to tell is with surgery. I'm really close. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so there's none. They're all fine, which is really good. My eardrum is, has been really weakened and it's like, I think he said, draped itself into the middle or something, I don't really know, but as far as pain goes, I have a bit of pain behind my ear. Um, it was pretty bad earlier, but I had some pain relief for that, so it's not um, too bad at the moment, but doing well. Oh yeah, I have, oh my gosh, I had some anti-nausea medicine, and it, oh my gosh, that's the worst pain of all for some reason. It made like my whole wrist and arm sting so bad, and she took it out. Then the whole top of my hand, now <laughs> the whole top of my hand 
just instantly got so 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 painful just a rapid increase of pain for a while so that sucked i don't know really why that happened i think she, she said something about um the medication being too strong for my veins but yeah i'm fine now it only lasted like a minute or two anyway good morning so um i saw the doctor this morning and he obviously took my bandage off and um told me how to take care of this basically i'm just not allowed to get it wet yeah now i get to go home so it's about nine o'clock and um got to go and pick up some medicine from the pharmacy and then mom is coming to get me soon i'm not in that much pain which is good yeah yesterday it was a lot a lot more sore but also look how much my ear sticks out now <laughs> this one's like flat and then So I'm home now, I have to wear a mask around my house because a lot of my family members have colds right now, which is not what I want recovering from this. <laughs> yes, everyone's wearing masks. Um, it's pretty sore actually, it's mostly sore like, take this off, it's mostly sore kind of like the base of my skull rather than actually where any of the incision is. If I move it, it kind of spasms. I've had that pain before so i'm not really sure why like unrelated to surgery or anything so i don't really know why i have it but i just turn this on to film and suddenly there's all this stuff that's moving out of my ear all i was gonna say was that i just woke up from a nap because my medication made me nauseous and really drowsy and just sent me straight to sleep for like six hours which is good because now i can just wake up and take more but <laughs> i'm like waking everywhere so i'll uh, just deal with this first i suppose good morning this is my food <laughs> chewing is like just makes it feel a bit weird so i'm just gonna stick to these for now i can feel my ear this morning a little bit more before all this like my ear itself was completely numb and I couldn't feel it, but now I'm starting to be able to feel it, which is kind of weird. Yeah. It's getting my breakfast. Right after I ate that, what I just showed you, like a minute later, I started feeling so nauseous and I just did the worst vomit I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> it was so painful. My throat has never burned so much before and it, the pressure of it like really hurt might make any ears is quite achy right now whoa this bit feels really swollen huh that's interesting i don't know if it was like that before if i've just never if i haven't touched that part of my ear yet i don't even know what's happening um but yeah i just thought i'd give that little update i think the trick is to eat before i have my medication in the future because that sucked. Good morning, it is day three post-op and we're gonna try wash my hair. Is <laughs> you gonna have a pillow? Yeah, it's a lame on, you can lay that there. This is the rest of your hair. This is shampoo. Um, Hello, this is day four post-op. I'm here with my sister. We just did a wedding expo. Um, so I had to cover. Honestly, you can't even tell that like I've had anything you can't done. Tell. You really, you cannot tell. I can't really hear anything. So singing was she sounded a, terrible. <laughs> singing was a bit of a challenge, but it seems to be fine. I'm not really in any pain at all today, um, which is really good. Made this fine and bearable and not hard um the only thing was i can't i'm not allowed to lift anything so poor tash had to lug i've been working out just for this moment so yeah she had to lug all of our gear and set up <laughs> everything because i'm not allowed to lift anything more than a chair so but yeah that's the update feeling good and no one can no one can tell that i just had major ear surgery so it's even better so by the time i got home from my gig my ear actually was pretty sore um inside but which was fine because I was due for more pain relief really by the time I got home anyway, so it's fine now. Um, but I realized in that clip I said that I couldn't hear anything, and I don't even think I explained. Um, basically, so obviously there's this 
piece of cotton wool here. It's just like a tiny little piece, but the whole, um, all of my ear canal is stuffed with packing. So I really don't know how well the surgery has worked until I get all of that out. I mean, I can already tell like there isn't the whooshing and everything that there was before. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I actually can't hear yet. <laughs> On Welcome. The, oh, go ahead. What are you oh, saying? On the ambulance driver today. Oh yeah, he's patient. <laughs> he's my my Uber, my ambulance driver. Uh, welcome to day nine post op. I haven't done any updates for the past few days because nothing has changed. I've had a little bit of pain here and there. Um, as I'm getting feeling back in my ear, I get some pain, like not not really even pain, just like mild discomfort and weird sensations behind my ear like on my actual ear my incision site doesn't hurt at all it's fine and i get sharp shooting pains sometimes in my ear but it's infrequent and sporadic um yeah so there's really been nothing to report other than i'm doing fine last night however <laughs> i had no pain the entire day and then went to a friend's house and we watched a movie and had games and stuff and it was very loud and after that for the rest of the night, my ear was really, really sore inside, sharp shooting pains and all that. And I woke up this morning and changed my cotton thing and it was so disgusting and gunky. So I don't know, maybe my eardrum's starting to work again and move again and it's making my ear bleed. I don't know, but I'm going to the doctor right now to get all my packing out and everything. This is an update on the what the incision actually looks like. I can't tell if, if that, is that good? You can yeah. see it? Thanks. So. Here we go, Christina. Get you just in that position there. And I'm going to take off the tapes from behind. Yep, and healing beautifully. Good. And second, I'll put some spray on, which is just like a plastic skin. And then from tomorrow, you can get all that area wet. Oh, great. Yeah, so behind. It'll make you happy. Yes. <laughs> can wash my hair like a normal person yes, now. You, you can. It's just this part, the ear canal, that you need to keep dry, and the cotton wool and Vaseline is exactly the thing to do. Cool. So, just the internal dressing coming out. You'll hear this, it's a bit squelchy. And that's it, that's most of it out. Cool, that's disgusting. It is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but except for through your blog, no one is ever going to hear about it or see about it. Yeah. <laughs> just a bit more squelchy internal dressing. Not too irritating. Um, it hurts a bit, but... Uh -huh. It's just soluble dressing like this. Just coming out little square bits. Right. And all that gunky stuff is actually antibiotic ointment on it. Oh, okay. So, all expected. Looks fine there. Okay. Okay, so... I'm just going to get another dressing. I'll show you. Stick. Mm -hmm. But once it's got antibiotic drops on it, it expands and it holds the drops there. Okay. So it's got two reasons for being there. One is to get the ear canal open. Mm -hmm. Ah. There we go. And the other one is to hold the antibiotic drops there so they don't just run out hopelessly. Uh -huh. So I'll give you a script for some of these, Sophilix. Cool. So just head over. I just feel it filling out the ear canal. I really thought that my ear canal would be empty after today. <laughs> I'm so sad. Not so quick. Oh. And that's there. Now, let's just check your hearing with the tuning fork and then I'll put on the spray dressing. Okay. What about that? Can you hear that? Yeah, on the Loud left side. Yep. Yeah. So the inner ear is working beautifully. Yay. Yeah, I'm really, really happy that there are no broken bones. Yeah, none at all. It's so good. It's just the collapsed drum on it. Yeah. So here we go, a bit of hairspray. Spray <laughs> dressing. A bit cold. There you go. Cool. That's it. That's the ordeal over for today. This is what it looks like now so hopefully you can see that i don't even know what it looks like i need to watch this back <laughs> hey guys this is day 20 which is 
insane but I'm back at the doctor and I think we're gonna get this packing out and put some more in um, yeah he put in some ointment it's just like he put it in with a little syringe it's like this much of just this yellow kind of liquid um, Anyway, so that's in there now and that stays in for three weeks. Then I go back and test my hearing and he said we should be right on track. So three more weeks. I thought it was going to be 10 days with this as well, but it's three weeks. I can't wait to be able to hear. Oh my gosh. Three weeks. I feel like I really haven't explained much at all during this whole time. Because... <laughs> I keep forgetting things that my doctor has said and I'm like, oh yeah, this is probably, like this is an update, this is something that I can say um, that might help some people and then I just never say it. So basically at my last appointment, the one that I filmed at, um, he said that I am able to go to the gym and, and lift, it. actually, <laughs> he said I can go back to the gym and I'm like, oh yeah, so I can, I can lift because it had been, what, 10 days and he, and he looks at me and he goes, yeah, it's not like you're lifting more than 20 kilos. <laughs> I mean, true, but <laughs> no, actually, thank you very much. My deadlift is 40 kilos. But yeah, so I'm allowed to do anything that I want. Um, I'm playing, I started learning drums and he said that that's totally fine. Like loud sounds and everything's fine. So basically life went back to normal for me after like 10 days post-op. So um, yeah, it's just like the, the no hearing and there's, and as like this, I need to show you. I haven't, sh I haven't um, updated this for a little while. Um, there you go. That's what it looks like. Can we, can we say that? I don't know. Hopefully. Um, yeah. So basically, life is completely normal. I can do whatever I want. Just I can't hear yet. I also forgot to mention that I still can't get my ear canal wet, and also I can't sleep on my right side. Ah, uh, left side. Oh my gosh. I can't sleep on my left side. I'm, I'm probably allowed to, it's just really uncomfortable. If something's like closing my ear, now that there's liquid, like kind of goo in there, it just gets really sticky and is kind of gross and uncomfortable. Um, other than that, my life is normal. <laughs> this is just my little magic wand. Oh for my God. <laughs> taking stuff out of your ear. So always feels like we're kind of going through to the other side of your head but it's great actually pretty superficial <laughs> and there is so much goo in your ear dr de cruz has left a healthy amount in there <laughs> just to keep that from getting infected after the operation how's that feeling not too bad not too horrible it's quite sensitive the ear here because You've kind of got skin over bone and then nerves in between. So even little sort of pokes are quite are quite sore, I'm afraid. I mean, do my do my best to be gentle with you there. Thanks. <laughs> there we go. Wow, you wouldn't believe how much stuff's gone over your ear. <laughs> I think I would. It's been very, very blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So that's your ear goo. Yuck. <laughs> yeah. Sorry that bit in. There. And let's have a look. Oh my yeah. gosh, this is gonna be so trippy. So there's that bit of extra goo on the outside there. And there's your eardrum. Wow. Let's take a little picture. Happy snap. There you go. Yeah, it's not the most attractive eardrum I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go in for eardrum modelling. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, but it's um, it's intact. So, um, Dr. De Cruz would have had. To... I'll just go over to the computer. But that's a normal eardrum. So you can see the bones there again. You can see there's like a shiny light there on the bottom right hand side. That's called the cone of light. That just shows us it's a nice, healthy eardrum. And it's really clear and transparent, isn't it? Mm. You can basically see through it, like almost like cling film. Yeah, right. So that's what it should look like. But the other side's not looking too bad, all things considered. Yeah. I've had an operation recently. Let's give that a try. So 
a little tickle, a little bit of air in the ear. Oh, excellent. A loud noise there. Good. Let's stop that one. And I'm just going to do that one more time on this side. There we go, another tickle here. A little bit of pressure in the ear. Oh, excellent. Basically like a movement of your eardrum. And you can see that the, it, isn't, it still isn't a huge amount of movement of your eardrum. It's still pretty flat. So okay. although the eardrum looks healthy, yeah, I think you still have a huge amount of movement. That could just be because the skin is a bit thick and still not, uh, the swelling hasn't reduced 100%. Okay. Sometimes it can mean there's still some fluid back there or there's some fluid has accumulated postoperatively. Right. So Professor de Cruz, I have a look at that to tell you if he thinks that's what's going on there. But hopefully it just clears up by itself. Hopefully. Let's give this right ear a look and I'll show you what it should look like. There you go, so a little peak in the middle there, and a bit of loud noise. So, this little hill here is the movement of the eardrum. <sighs> what an anticlimactic end to this vlog. I really thought that once they were, the goo would get taken out of my ear, that I would just, I'd have like this magic, oh my gosh, I can hear, moment that you see, you know, when people will get their hearing aids turned on for the first time. I thought that was going to be me. Um, yeah, but it sounded exactly the same when he took it out. And as you saw, we couldn't really see. Yeah, so my eardrum still isn't really moving. And there's still fluid. It will go down, the swelling everything it'll go down it'll just take more time i'm so disappointed oh my gosh i really thought that i would be able to hear perfectly now that's also why i want to make this so that other people that are going through the same thing that i am don't get bitterly disappointed when it doesn't happen the way they are expecting it to happen so after i had the hearing test i went and saw my doctor and he said that i well first of all he said that i don't need any more surgeries so that's really good um, he also said it's going to take six months for my brain to adjust to hearing out of two ears instead of just one. Six months. It's already been three months since I started this whole thing. Another six months before I can hear. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to upload a part two to this of when I get my other hearing test. So my hearing test that I that I got, actually, it has increased. My hearing has increased, I think, about 50% compared to what it was before the surgery. I can't tell, though. It sounds the same, but apparently it is better. It just still sounds really blocked up to me. So in six months, I get another hearing test, and it should be pretty much up to... It should be a lot, a lot better. I'll upload a part two to this, but for now, <laughs> like I still can't even freaking hear properly. It is, it is better, it is better than it was. It's just not what I thought it was gonna be. So I'm um, sorry to string you along for half an hour <laughs> to be disappointed in the end, but we're disappointed together, so. So I guess I will see you again in six months. Also, I need to do one final update of my scar of course so this there's actually still a stitch in there there's, you were, i don't know if you, how well you'll be able to see it but if i so you can see that the hair is growing back the scar looking good but at the very top uh i don't know how to show this oh wait a minute it's gone ah oh, i was gonna show you my stitch I, when the heck did that come out Okay, well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs>